This chapter is everything we've been wanting from Sukuna versus Gojo. Getting to see new things from both Sukuna and Gojo, especially with the phony moments and their reactions during this chapter. Needless to say, this is definitely going down in the history books as one of the greatest fights, at least of how it started so far, and it just, it's so good. It's, it's just really good. I have no words. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about, what is this new Gojo technique that's going on? Now, I can't even lie, at first I was confused when he started pulling out telekinesis like a Jedi or like Sun Jin Wu from solo leveling, because it's just so much different from the blue and red that we've seen throughout the series, but it is looking like it's the blue and red, but just to such a different level of mastery, finesse, and control that it's not even comparable to the blue and red that we saw in the hidden inventory. And it's the fact that he's combining the two to actually just straight up make telekinesis, like he's actually using telekinesis right here. Now I get why he didn't use this for Jogo and Haname during Shibuya because, you know, domain application, but why didn't he actually use this for Choso and Mahito to apprehend them during Shibuya? And actually, does it work against domain application? Because it does seem like, and we'll be getting into this later on in the video, but Sukuna and Gojo were switched on throughout the fight between domain application on and off. So this was one of the theories that many people had and I had myself. And that's what Sukuna would be doing. He'd be switching between the two. It seems like Gojo is actually doing this as well. But regardless, it's really, really cool. I mean, it's telekinesis. Who does not like to see telekinesis, especially to this level? And yeah, it's actually reminding me of the high evolution from the recent Guardians movie too. Man, Gojo is something else. And actually to just break into one quick thing, is this something that he just learned recently? Or is this something that he just learned before with the 11 years of training that he's had since the hidden inventory? The reason I ask this is because in the beginning of the chapter, after Gojo actually says, I've had some special training. Now, obviously, because these are the leaks, it's not too clear what he's referring to, so CCB and Viz, I will actually clarify what he's referring to exactly. But is he referring to the time in the prison realm, or is he referring to the time, well, the 11 years that he's had to train? If it is in the prison realm, then yes, this is just a completely new technique, or at least a new level of mastery that he didn't have before. But I do think this is probably something he's always had. It's just incredible. It really is. To see how this fight went, especially with Sukuna and Gojo clashing so many times, and the banter as well, the banter was so witty, it was so good. And yes, the fight did start off with a lot of hand-to-hand, -hand. of course we did see, you know, telekinesis, the combination of red and blue just used to higher level, and of course cleaving this mantle, which actually, did it get bounced off Gojo's infinity, or was Gojo just shocked, because when he saw it, he did seem surprised after the slash went, so does this mean Gojo actually can't perceive the slashes, because he said they was just too fast and he couldn't see it, or is it that he did see it, but it was just, you know, it really shocked him, or it really took him out of it. Regardless, the city was also completely destroyed, I mean, it's just exactly what we saw, the city is getting leveled as this fight has has gone on, and it's just the beginning as well, you know, a lot of hand-to-hand -hand and things like that. And I do imagine we're going to be seeing some crazy techniques pulled out very soon, because remember, we still haven't seen Sukuna's Flames, the Ten Shadows, and a lot of other things from Gojo, which he might have, and you know, we still have Domains left, and also Mahoroga, so that's coming as well, and Gojo's Maximum too, so yeah, a lot that is happening very soon. This is just the beginning, the appetizer. And yes, that bit of banter at the end as well was so funny, especially with Gojo and Sukuna, kind of actually just chilling, you know, like, oh wow, what do you mean? Isn't this, you know, all your fault as well? Well. And in the beginning as well, when Sukuna said he's just like a fish and Gojo is a no one, and how he's gonna remove his scales, that's a lot of trash talking, but it does make sense, since this is Sukuna, the king of curses, right? I also did like that Toji reference as well. You know, my man Gojo trash talking Toji as well. <laughs> now, I do wonder, does he actually mean to kill Sukuna right now, so I guess he's not trying to save Megumi, or is he actually just saying that to try to throw Sukuna off, you know? So the plan is to save Megumi, but he's not gonna let Sukuna know that, and he's gonna make Sukuna think that he's actually trying to kill him. Maybe for Yuji to swoop in at some moment, and do some soul swapping or something like that. Place his soul inside of Sukuna. But yeah, so far, no one's taken any damage as well, or at least any real damage. So this really is just the opening act to this fight. The hand-to-hand -hand section and throwing around a bit of curse techniques, like a bit of dismantle, looking like he was from Yu Yu Hakusho with a spirit gun. And it really does hurt that next chapter won't be next week since we're going to be on break next week, so we're going to have to wait a whole two weeks for the next chapter. And this fight was actually just choreographed so well, you know, with the first two pages paralleling Sukuna and Gojo getting into a fight stance. And then also Gojo just going low when he dodges one of Sukuna's attacks and just blasting him with the red. Okay, that was really cool. And there was also that one time when they went through the buildings as well, and then one of them brought the door down and they punched through it, just destroying the entire area that they were in. Now that was just absolutely wild. But now for some theories about where I think this is gonna go and what's gonna happen. And by the way, if you've been enjoying the video so far, hey, do your boy a solid and leave a like, it really does help out. And if you haven't, subscribe, I've got a ton of JJK content just like this, as well as a live stream that's going up today talking about the chapter live. Alright, now, to get back into the chapter, if I had to scale it or rate it like how a boxing match does, I'd probably go 10 to 9 in Gojo's favor. Even though no one's actually done any damage, it just seems Gojo did more against Sakuna with his techniques. And you know, maybe I'm a Gojo fan, so maybe that's why as well. But overall, it was just insanely impressive.
aggressive, insanely close from both of them, and no one actually looked bad or took any real damage at all this chapter. But let's just say that the city took quite a lot of damage, especially the editor's comments this chapter, where the editor says it's a battle of monsters, the city can't bear it. I really do hope that next chapter we continue with this fight and we don't go to Kenjaku due to Hakari and everyone else there. Not that I don't want to see that stuff, but really I just want to get into more of this Gojo versus Sukuna fight. I do imagine Sukuna's going to save Mahoroga for later on in the fight, but who knows, maybe he'll just start the next chapter with summoning Mahoroga. And he also does need to start utilizing the Ten Shadows a bit, though the Ten Shadows wouldn't really be useless against Gojo right now, but there is still the idea which people theorize could actually turn off the Infinity, which might not even be needed since Gojo willingly turned it off so that they could fight and clash together in the building, which is really interesting to see, so Gojo isn't just going to rely on his Infinity, and Sukuna might not even need to get past it that way, Gojo willingly turned it off so they could just bunch. And this does confirm that 20 Fingered Sukuna and Gojo, at least in terms of hand to hand, so without the Infinity, are actually even, so they have a very similar level of strength and power and speed, because of course their fierce that clash without the Infinity is even. But I do wonder, because I've actually been seeing theories, that actually from Gege's previous manga, so the MC from Gege's previous stories that he's written, he actually has the shrine technique, so it's the exact same kanji in Japanese text that summons the shrine. And this character, when he uses shrine, he actually literally summons multiple weapons out of it, so bow and arrows, kind of like Sukuna's flames and arrows, spears and swords and such like that. So it's very likely that we might finally get the answer to what this shrine does, and maybe Sukuna just pulls out a whole slew of weapons, you know, not just the flames, but maybe also other elements too, like water and ice, or electricity maybe even. I might finally get the answer as to why Sukuna is called the King of Curses and Lethal Poisons, as, you know, Lethal Poisons being in his titles has got to mean something, you know, because even Yuji as his vessel had resistances to all poisons, so maybe we'll actually get to see some poisonous curse techniques because Gojo did turn off his infinity, so the poison might reach Gojo, even though we know Gojo can now heal from poisons, but maybe Sukuna's is special, just like how his flames aren't regular flames, they're so special to the point that his flames could actually burn a volcano cursed spirit, they are that special, so maybe his poisons is also the same. But seeing all of this for Sukuna, you know, the Ten Shadows, his shrine, maybe the weapon that Yorozu gave him, whatever that gift was, his own other weapons, the flames, Gojo just has to have more. Not just the red and blue which we saw him use this chapter, and the hollow purple which he's already used, actually if that's the case, we've seen everything from Gojo so far, and it's only the opening of the fight. So I do think the theories are true, you know, the legends are true, Gojo does have some other techniques hidden in there. Even though I probably titled this, oh Gojo's new curse technique, telekinesis, you know, for just, just a little bit of clickbait, but it's, it is true, he is using telekinesis, and it really is just like a new curse technique, it really just functions that way, it's incredible. This level of control and finesse that he has with the red and blue now. Now as for the domain amplification part, if Sukuna was using it, why didn't it hit Gojo? It's possible that Gojo did learn from the Shibuya fight about it, well it seemed like he already knew it though, and he's probably reinforced his infinity, since we know he can actually do that and make it stronger so that it can withstand domain amplification, but we also see that he's using it as well to clash with Sukuna, and if he is using domain amplification, that does mean he's turning his infinity off for a while. Well maybe that aura that's around him could be his infinity, but the issue is it's literally the same as Sukuna, so it might actually just be reinforcement actually, maybe not domain amplification. Regardless, you know, I still got my money on Gojo being stronger, but of course Gojo just has to lose narratively, because it has to be Yuji or someone else to finish the job, it would be so anticlimactic if Gojo just won here and now, he just defeated Sukuna and the series ends, which isn't impossible, but we just know it's not gonna happen. But I do at least, you know, I'm still backing on that theory, that the fight will be relatively even, or at least Gojo may have an upper hand at some point as well, but once the domain clash starts, regardless of if Gojo has an open domain or a closed domain, Tengen might just dismantle Gojo's domain like he did with Kenjaku, since again, Tengen's barriers are all around everywhere. I actually can't remember exactly if the area they're fighting in is a culling game barrier place. It hasn't been said yet, so I'd actually need to double check that, probably during the live stream if it is, because if they are fighting in a culling game barrier right now, which shouldn't be possible as well since new players can't enter and Gojo wasn't a player, so that already shouldn't be possible, but if they are, it would be bad news for Gojo because the culling game barriers are actually even better barriers than the four special barriers that Tengen had, so one of these being the Tomb of the Stars, so if it is, Tengen could definitely just mess with Gojo in this game. But maybe Urume is going to do something sneaky, maybe Kenjaku will do something sneaky to help him, we know in Sukuna's own personality, he is someone who's just a true villain to heart, he's a true villain through and through. Even with the Angel situation and Hana, he did probably one of the most dirtiest, slimiest moves I've ever seen, there was no honour or pride at all in that, he just went straight for the Oscars, where he just gave a 10 out of 10 acting performance to trick Hana into thinking he's Megami. Maybe people are saying he actually doesn't want to do this for Gojo, because it's Gojo, even though I don't see that being the case, since in his own personality, you know, it's been said multiple times, he is a curse, he doesn't care, he just wants to win. But maybe it is true that for this fight he doesn't want interruptions, but even if Kenjaku does interrupt against Sukuna's will, first of all, it's in Kenjaku's best interest to do this, because if it looks like Sukuna's losing, and Gojo wins, well, Kenjaku's dead anyway, Gojo's going to kill him. And second of all, because there are binding vows in place, whatever 
whatever they are, even if Sukuna is very upset at Kenjaku, he wouldn't be able to kill him because of the binding vows that are in place. So we'll see what happens of all of that. But regardless, I do have at least Gojo being stronger. I don't think Gojo is going to lose in a fair way. If Gojo loses in a fair way, then oh boy, I'm going to be in shambles. Gojo Nation will be in shambles. Maybe he's going to switch to Megami for a split second and pull, kind of like an Araba from Magi when she was fighting Hakuri. And even though Gojo has sealed himself and said he's going to kill Megami and he doesn't care about this and I'll think about it after, it's still kind of his adopted son, isn't it? He raised Megami from when Megami was a child. And even if it's just for a split second of hesitation, just a split moment, because we've seen Gojo isn't some sort of machine or robot. Evident with Shibuya when he just saw Geto and he saw years of memory just flash. So he is human, you know? We'll see, because all it takes is just one second of hesitation, just one second to be caught off guard, and it's over. And all I'm saying is, if Sukun actually does this, then, you know, it's not a real loss, is it? You know, it's a dirty move. So I do hope, you know, if Gojo has to lose, it's via a method like that. Hey, if you've watched this far and you haven't subscribed, I would highly recommend doing so because trust me, I got a ton of JJK videos just like this on channel and a ton more coming, such as a live stream discussing this chapter today as this video goes out. And if you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like too. Let me know in the comments, Sukuna or Gojo, hashtag Team Gojo over here, you know your boy. And of course, thank you to all the members of the channel, especially to the honored one and special grade members of the channel, the Isekaisen and that guy Trey. Thank you guys very much. And to everyone else as well, if you see all your names on the screen, you're absolute legends. I really do appreciate it. You guys really help out. But that's all. Have a nice day and take care.